because there's a lot of stories out there. Like, you know, a lot of people are saying a lot of things. So whatever we hear, we just search. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, in the area that they say, you know, we, but we haven't found her. Mm -hmm. But we, we can't give up and not, you know, do anything. We have to keep looking. We're here in downtown Edmonton to meet the family of Misty Faith Potts as they search for her. She went missing just six months ago. As a journalist, it's a story I'm all too familiar with, but as a Métis woman, Misty's story really punched me in the gut. For me, I thought the only way I can help is if I get educated. The way I see it is the more education I have, the more like the outside world will accept what I'm saying. Misty defied a lot of stereotypes about Indigenous women. She had a master's degree, she was a champion for the environment, and was extremely outspoken about women's rights. It's funny because if an elder goes out there and tells them what I'm saying, they won't, they won't really listen. So it was different worlds, you know, and I'm trying to bridge those worlds. Misty is one of nearly 1,200 missing or murdered Indigenous women across Canada. Her family has raised a $1,200 reward and go out and search for her as often as they can. They're allowing me to join them for a few days to see firsthand what the families of missing or murdered Indigenous women go through. I just take frequent drives by. Can't sleep, I'll jump in a truck and come ride around. So pretty frequent. <laughs> what do you hope to find? What are the things you're looking for? Like I said, people have been saying they, they have seen her down there, eh? But you, you can never you can never be too sure because most of the people that told me that they've seen her, they ask for something right after they tell me that, eh? She liked this house here. Well, it's all boarded up now, but see the top one? That's a separate apartment. That window is a separate apartment, that window. Mm -hmm. And people live in there and they'll rent you their place for $20 worth of crack. I think this is some of the places my sister was hanging out. Misty started using drugs in 2011 after her marriage broke down and her brother passed away. She had a job offer and had started paperwork for rehab when she disappeared on March 14th of this year. She was 37. Not too long after we've put the posters out, uh, we've heard that somebody was going around ripping them down. And, I don't know, we kind of figured that might have been her ripping them down, like she didn't want to be found. But then, after a while, it just didn't make sense, you know. I didn't want to do this. Mm -hmm. And, I don't know, like, when you guys pulled up, I just wanted to tell you guys to go away. <laughs> because uh, I don't, sometimes, like, I'm in denial. I don't want to believe that she's missing. Mm -hmm. You know, drugs does make you do messed up things, and you, are, you aren't you are the person that you were. Mm -hmm. But there has to be a little bit of her still there mm -hmm. for her enough to just pick up the phone and phone. That's why I don't think she's alive, because of that. I tell my dad this, but my dad really believes that she's alive. We received a tip from a lady by the name of Renee that told us that they came here around about the time that uh, Missy disappeared. And a couple of gentlemen got off a vehicle that they came in here with. They were told to keep their heads down. Mm -hmm. And they uh, proceeded to remove something from the back of the vehicle. And they were gone for a period of 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. She described this area that we're in here. Mm -hmm. And so we came here and we checked uh, on that side and around this side, we timed it for 15 minutes. From the time for disappearance to the time that we received that tip, uh, some time had elapsed, maybe uh, two, three weeks. To me, it's possible that they could have brought her here if they did harm her and uh, dispose of her body in one of these containers mm -hmm. because I don't know if those people that drive those uh, vehicles check what's in a container. You think she just could have been dumped and the bin would have been hauled away? Yeah. I don't know what their uh, schedule is. 
That's why I'm saying, you know, it's the police have to do their work. Do you know if this is a place that the police have come? I don't know. Uh, I have not received any information at all whatsoever. Misty's case was transferred from the Mayorthorpe RCMP to the headquarters at Edmonton's K Division in August. They declined our request for an interview because the investigation is ongoing and referred us to the national headquarters, who also declined our request. To me, life on Alexis is pretty um, unstable, like, you know, dangerous. Ever since um, my daughter went missing, I can't, I can't even trust anybody on Alexis. I don't feel safe here. Yeah. Um, and Misty lived with you here for a little while before she went missing, right? Do you remember the last time you spoke to her? I was going to uh, where I work mm -hmm. to go and do a few things, and she, she came with me. She said, I'll come with you. She grabbed her sweater. She came with me. We went to, um, <clears throat> when we were going by the store, she, she said, OK, uh, Mom, I'll just get off here and wait in here until you come back this way. And mm -hmm. um, I went to do what I, I had to do. I came back to pick her up, and she came to the car, and she told me, Mom, it's OK. You know, I'll walk back. And I said, are you sure? Because just like, you know, this is still winter. She said, mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm OK. I'll warm up while I'm walking, like, you know. And that's the last time I seen her. I never seen her after that. I need to find her. And, you know, I, I, I at night, especially at night, I, I wonder, like, you know, where she where is she, like, I can't just leave her there. Mm -hmm. Wherever she's laying, like. I just know I have to find her. Now that the summer is ending and water levels are starting to go down, the Potts family is searching even more. They know that once the snow falls, the chance of finding Misty is even less likely. You can't walk into the areas like you tried, but um, you know, you gotta get permission from the, the landowners. Mm -hmm. This guy right here actually gave us a permission to go through here, but the police asked us not to uh, because they're gonna come through here this week. And I find it funny because the police told me that they combed this whole area. They told me that they got search and rescue to come out, and they, they even brought me in to identify some uh, items. And so I was under the impression that they already did like the land. So that's why we just did the ditches. And this guy comes here on Saturday, because I came here on Saturday. And he came and saw me, and he told me that nobody, they didn't even search his land. And they didn't search that part. And like, so I'm wondering, where did, where did they search then? These last few days with the Potts family have been sobering and eye-opening. It's almost unbelievable to think that there are nearly 1,200 families across the country in the same situation. Do you think Misty is alive? Uh, I don't know. That's, that's a question that is going to haunt me until I know for sure. That's why I'm relying on the police to help me with that. It's horrible. After we left Edmonton, a psychic who claims to have a 90% success rate got in touch with the POTS. They plan on including him in their search for Misty.